You have clicked or tapped on to the Valley's most in-depth weather forecast video for Friday evening. It's the 12th day of May 2023. We're almost halfway through the month. It's been a pretty quiet month weather-wise, and the pattern overall is a quiet one, taking us out through the next week, with one exception, that is late tonight into tomorrow, when we will have some damp weather to deal with in some parts of our area. But today was the warmest day of May so far, and the second consecutive day with highs in the lower 80s. We've come a long way since the very beginning of the month when we had record chilly afternoon temperatures on the second day of the month when the high was just 44. Today's high 82 though, and this will probably be the high watermark for a while, although there's a chance in some places we might flirt with 80 tomorrow afternoon, but uh, most of us will not uh, reach the 80s on our Saturday. Quick time lapse from uh, Niles today. Good looking morning and midday before the clouds as expected started to thicken and lower some during the uh, afternoon, especially late in the afternoon, and these uh, increasing clouds ahead of a system that will Again, bring us a little bit of wet weather, but no severe weather with this. And actually, severe weather has been lacking over the last several weeks. I, I rewound the clock to April 2nd. That was the day after our second wind event across the area. Uh, we had two damaging wind events uh, in most of eastern Ohio and western PA at the end of March and on April the uh, 1st. Severe thunderstorm warnings, though, since April 2nd have been confined to areas south of 224, Columbiana County on south. Tornado warnings have been... You know, confined to central and, and uh, western Ohio. Um, but uh, yeah, the rest of our area, it's been a quiet, severe weather season so far after kind of a fast start earlier on this spring. Now, when we look at tornado climatology across the lower 48 states here in May, no surprise, things are kind of peaking in the middle of the country. Usually early in the season, it's more in the south, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, places like that. As we get into the middle of May, uh, it becomes more of a, a Dallas, Oklahoma City, Kansas City, uh, Des Moines, places like that, more of an issue there. And then around our part of the country, it's typically June and maybe early July that we see severe weather and tornado risks kind of reach their crescendo. Not to say we can't see tornadoes every other month of the year, because we can with the exception of December. We've uh, never had one in our area in December, at least in the last several decades. Uh, we've had a couple in January in the last handful of years, but uh, have not seen one in uh, December in the last few decades anyway. But around here, yeah, the peak is usually as we get into early summer with decreasing chances for severe weather and tornadoes later on in the summer. And with this kind of pattern over the next six to ten days, I wouldn't expect a lot of severe weather around here. There may be a pretty healthy front that tries to cross the area in about a week, probably sometime between Friday and Saturday, um, seven, eight days from now, that might have some pep in its step. But until then, we've got a lot of sunshine in our forecast, so the quiet, severe weather season uh, certainly will continue. But it's another busy evening out across the nation's midsection. This is a pretty classic May looking weather map with severe thunderstorm watches from uh, the Big Bend of Texas up through uh, the heart of Oklahoma again where they had tornadoes last evening. It's a severe thunderstorm watch there this evening. The tornado threat's a little farther to the north where you see red in Omaha and other parts of uh, Nebraska and parts of South Dakota as well. Closer to home as of this recording at 7.06 had some radar returns, but most, if not all, of this is not reaching the ground. Maybe there's a sprinkle here and there, a quick shower. But a lot of this is getting eaten up by some dry air in the lower levels. We actually have some more uh, legitimate rain, and quite a bit of it, actually, down towards Columbus this evening. Some uh, tropical downpours and some lightning and thunder right over the uh, capital city of Ohio early this evening. Nothing like that expected around here, but again, a shower or a sprinkle will be possible this evening. And as we go through the overnight, a couple of showers will be around. A lot of us maybe dry overnight, but some of us are going to see some rain. I think most places uh, will get wet early in the day Saturday. Maybe a lot of places don't see a lot tonight, but as we get into the daylight hour Saturday, at least a little bit of rain should occur in just about our entire area uh, during the first part of our Saturday. But from north to south, we should see a drying trend. This is still a little bit of tricky business, trying to time out this rain on Saturday. And it's, you know, it's important because it's a weekend in May. Uh, people have plans. And uh, just know that we have a good chance of getting wet early. As we get into the afternoon from north to south, look for decreasing rain chances. Now, it may take a while to lose the chance of rain the farther south you are. So think places like Lisbon, East Palestine, East Liverpool, um, Rogers, heading down towards Selineville, uh, Elwood City, even Newcastle. It may take a little while for those places to see the rain chances decrease. Whereas in the north, Cortland, Sharon on north, up towards uh, Greenville, Kinsman, Mesopotamia, 
Southington, places like that, um, you'll probably see those rain chances start to decrease faster and the sun even trying to break out a little bit faster in those locales. But the entire area should be in okay shape for the last couple of hours of daylight. Should be a pleasant enough evening, Saturday evening. Uh, a lot of us should be dry and uh, some clearing of the sky and we'll call it a mix of sun and clouds for our Sunday. Brief period where it may turn overcast for a time Sunday evening, but then we're into bright sunshine for Monday and quiet weather for just about all of next week. Temperature-wise this weekend, again, we have 76 for the high tomorrow. If the sun breaks out a little bit faster, especially in our northern viewing area, you might flirt with 80 in those northern areas. We're in our southern areas where it takes a little bit longer for the rain to push away and the clouds might take a while to break, uh, you'll be hard-pressed to see the 76 tomorrow. So we might have a range, an unusual range, um, where it's warmer in the north and cooler in the south on our Saturday. Everyone should see about 70 on our Sunday. And then next week, a long stretch of quiet weather. We have a midweek cold front that rolls through sometime Tuesday night, maybe first thing Wednesday morning. And in its way, clear sky Wednesday night into Thursday morning, I'm not going to be able to rule out maybe some patchy frost. Now, I know we gave you the all clear a week or so ago, and for most of us, I don't think this will be a big concern. We're start, certainly not going to see a hard freeze out of this. Um, but Wednesday night, first thing Thursday morning, we might dip down into this area where some patchy frost might be possible. Now, you know, deep into May, it gets hard to get frost, even when you see temperatures dipping into the 30s, because you're typically not that cold for very long, because the nights are getting short. The sun rises, you know, close to 6 o'clock almost at this time of the year. So, you know, I'm not expecting a killing freeze or anything like that, but maybe one final risk of patchy frost Wednesday night and Thursday morning. Of course, we'll keep you updated on that risk early on next week. And look for that update on the next edition of Weather for Weather Geeks on Monday. Hope you have a great weekend. I'll see you back here in a few days.